It is the biological norm, human milk for human babies. In this program, we'll be examining the topic of breastfeeding and its place in the American culture. According to the World Health Organization, breastfeeding is the most efficient way to securing your baby's health and survival. So we've gone from breastfeeding being a lifestyle choice to breastfeeding being kind of a public health mandate. And now what did we hear last week? It's now a high priority a public high health A high priority mandate. health mandate, a public health mandate. That's yeah. really a lot. Yeah. It is crucial for a mother to breastfeed her baby for at least the first six months, but extended breastfeeding is highly recommended. Breast milk changes as the baby gets older to become more perfect for the baby's environment. So not only does the baby getting the accumulation of antibodies of everything he's been exposed to and he gets you know, uh, a new opportunity to take in those antibodies from the milk um, so that his own immune system you know, has a chance to catch up, but the milk changes to be um, better suited to fight off viruses. For example, by the end of the first year, the milk becomes more caloric, uh, higher in calories, so that uh, as the baby needs more energy because he's one or two or three, the milk has higher calorie content in it. Mm. So it, it doesn't become Kool-Aid. It never becomes, you know, juice. How do you know when to stop? So personally, just taking off my professional hat, I'm, I'm a big believer in baby, uh, uh, the baby weaning itself, basically. So, you know, just letting the baby nurse when the baby wants to nurse, or the toddler as it, or the young child. I think in our modern culture, the problem is that you can't do it the right amount. Right. You can, women are chastised for not breastfeeding long enough, and other women are chastised for breastfeeding too long. And everybody you run into as a breastfeeding mom tells you something different. Yeah. Oh, shoot. Yeah. You yeah. shouldn't still be doing that. He's manipulating you or whatever. I've had some comments from family members who have said, oh, well, you're not going to breastfeed her after six months, are you? Or, oh, you'd better stop breastfeeding. It. You know, if she can crawl over to the refrigerator and get herself a drink, you better not be breastfeeding her. And it's like, you know what, I'll breastfeed her until she wants to stop breastfeeding. And I think extended breastfeeding, you know, that we even have to have a term for that, is fine. There's no, There's no social, social norm. norm. Yeah. So what we find is that women you know, sort of become affiliated with groups of other women who have a similar idea, a similar lifestyle. And as we go through life, women find new friends and, mm -hmm. you know, change the friends that they have. And certainly one of the ways that we see women do that is around childbearing and breastfeeding. Despite the established benefits of breast milk, breastfeeding still remains voluntary rather than a necessary practice. There are a lot of reasons why most women do not breastfeed. And the number one of all is maternity leave. Why are we the only industrialized country without paid maternity leave? Why is that? It's because we haven't put our eggs in the basket that that's important. In our country, a parent is allowed two weeks of unpaid maternity leave. This, of course, is thanks to the Family and Medical Leave Act, which guarantees this opportunity to a parent as long as they fit under certain criteria such as working for a larger company of 50 or more employees, meeting tenure, and certain our requirements. Yes, low-wage earners have an enormous struggle around this, but some high-wage earners have an enormous struggle around this, too. It's kind of across the board that it's harder for women to, you know, for teachers, for anybody who works in the medical field to get a break. Retail. For retail, oh for, gosh. you know, housekeeping, for all of, you think about so many different realms where it's very challenging for women to get a break. Now here's some more harsh reality. In the UK, which has proven to be the best place to be a parent, offers 280 days of maternity leave, in which 90% of those days are paid. We got Russia, China, Brazil, even Mexico, that offers 90 plus days of maternity leave in which 90% of those days or more are paid. So what is our excuse? We have sort of said it's, it's optional to be this kind of parent, whereas most countries that have government sponsored insurance have recognized that it costs us a lot of money to have kids and women who haven't been breastfed. Let's put our money up, in the, up front in the beginning and be prevention oriented rather than doing what we do, put our money into the cleanup phase. Let's, you know, let's deal with the diseases once they happen. 
for those mothers who have chosen to breastfeed, trying to balance your baby's health and your career can prove as a challenge in most workplaces. You have to pump for at least 20 minutes, so to get there, get set up and come back, <clears throat> if you just have a 10 or 15 minute break, you're not going to be able to do it. It's much easier to get a break to smoke than it is to pump your milk in many workplaces, mm -hmm. which is right. ironic. If you have a supportive workplace, you have a supportive boss, you have a, a safe, comfortable place to pump, all of those things go such a long way um, to a mom's success in, in keeping up her milk supply. Another large factor that impedes on most women's choice to breastfeed are cultural misconceptions. Furthermore, excessive marketing of baby formula leaves many women ignorant of their choices. A lot of first-time moms don't have much experience at all at all and that's I, I blame that as a, that that's a cultural thing mm -hmm. because we don't see breastfeeding in our media we don't see breastfeeding in the movies we don't see breastfeeding in print ads we see bottles it's all bottles and so we don't have that um, that sort of village mentality where we've seen our everyone we know has been breast you know you've seen breastfeeding at some time because of the formula act of 1980 the FDA requires certain nutrients to be present in infants formulas we're talking about protein, fat, vitamins, sodium, potassium, all to make sure that baby formula is just as good as breast milk. Now here's the question. Is baby formula good enough to replace breast milk? When we say things like formula is nutritionally equivalent to milk, to human milk, that's probably true in the sense of proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. We engineer it as best we can to reflect human milk. But what we do not credit is the unknown, the complicity in breast milk, the things that scientists still do not understand. There are millions of live cells in milk, many of which we don't understand. Mm -hmm. Just to give you an example, for a long time people have known that there are these things called oligosaccharides in human milk. An enormous percentage of the amount of carbohydrate that's in milk is in this form, which has puzzled scientists for years because humans don't digest it. So if humans don't digest this saccharide, why is it in our milk? Well, it turns out it's in our milk to feed the healthy bacteria that grow in our gut and form our microbiome. Through breastfeeding, not only does the breast milk build the baby's immune system, it also passes on antibodies from generations before. When you start to take a look at you know, how we keep families healthy, um, part of that is giving this heritage that we have from one generation to another of all of the things that we've encountered in our environment and how our body has learned to fight off of fight off those um, invaders um, from our environment and and we can pass those on to our babies now for the million dollar question what does this have to do with me research proves that breastfeeding may reduce infections obesity in later life and child mortality rates also, researchers have connected serious illnesses and conditions like obesity, leukemia, breast cancer, asthma, even lowered IQ to infant consumption of formula. It is time we take those breasts out and start breastfeeding our babies. Um, I feel like it is, it is the truest form of a whole food that we will ever consume and it is what it's what our bodies, it's, it's how our bodies were meant to be nourished right from the get-go. So it supports every single system within that baby's body, their brain development, nervous system, um, just digestive system. Even the act of breastfeeding uh, helps with muscles in the jaw, which will then later help um, with speech and eating. I mean, there's so much that goes into it. So why again is breast milk still underestimated in our culture? The devil might be in the details. Just how we choose to identify something determines the value we associate with it. I actually can remember when we were told at a conference not to call it nursing anymore mm -hmm. because we always called it nursing your baby and we were told no, no, that's old fashioned. Now you mm -hmm. have to call it breastfeeding. And in that moment, we really made the cultural shift to thinking that there could be possibly an equivalency to, to breast milk. Now that this idea, this myth, that breastfeeding can suck the life out of you, while in contrary, there are lots of reasons to why you should breastfeed. You are the baby's habitat. 
that baby, you have grown the baby inside of you and the baby comes out and that is, they want to smell you, be with you, feel you, um, and be nourished by you. Mm -hmm. So, And so for women who don't breastfeed, they never get that reset. And so for a woman who's had, say, gestational diabetes or some other problem in pregnancy, she really has a higher tendency to become diabetic unless she breastfeeds and just gives her body that reset. So you think about breastfeeding as sort of the control all delete of, <laughs> of pregnancy in your body. And there's also the sexual point of view. In our culture, a woman's breast is overly sexualized. It is very difficult for the public to see the same woman's breast as an adequate source for baby's nutrition and it being a sex symbol at the same time. This science is screaming to us that breastfeeding is the safest and effective way to securing both the mother's and the baby's health. Women who wish to breastfeed can use some encouragement because not only breastfeeding can be stressful to some mothers, breastfeeding is doomed impossible. About 30% of women are told that their babies with Down syndrome just are not going to be able to breastfeed and that they shouldn't even bother, or they're not going to be able to eat normally. There's a lot of misinformation about breastfeeding and babies with Down syndrome. For example, my daughter was not strong enough to, to breastfeed directly uh, until she was 11 weeks old and that's pretty common. Three months seems to be sort of the magic number for kids with Down syndrome. They get stronger, they figure out the suck, swallow, breathe reflex, which my daughter did not have. Um, they sort of wake up a little bit and so they're able to really to do it and before then they're not and so they leave the hospital and the doctors say oh that baby doesn't breastfeed and they don't see six months a year down the road hey these babies not only are they breastfeeding they're breastfeeding really well they're thriving and they're still breastfeeding now what would you like to see change in our society or with lawmakers what would you like to see change in order for us to embrace the women who breastfeed and to encourage more to do so you know we need to work on this on many different levels we we have to work with our own families and communities to understand why breastfeeding is important and what's in it for all of us. For a mom and baby to be successful, we need to approach it on, a, on the government level in terms of figuring out how do we get ma paid maternity leave or family leave for families that wish to do this. How do we make workplaces more accommodating? We have, you know, we have a lot of work around that. The government has put together, um, you know, got some guidance documents for us about that. We have a law here in Massachusetts, Rhode Island has one as well, that says that uh, women have the right to breastfeed in any public place they have the right to be. If, if every woman were able to receive a nurse or a lactation consultant, or even just a home visitor like they do in England, to come check on her, see how she's doing, check on the baby, weigh the baby, I think just it would just really go a long way towards encouraging not only breastfeeding, but encouraging mom's mental health. I think it could help with postpartum depression. I, th I think it could help with a lot of things. And it's